Okay, welcome to part 11 of this video series on the hidden Markov model. Today what I want to talk about is the second key question for hidden Markov models, and that was motivated in our previous video. Today we're going to work on how we algorithmically, mathematically solve that problem. Our problem is motivated by a robot moving through a world and observing floor coverings, but not having other, any other information about where it is. And so we want to be able to answer the question, what sequence of states best explains a sequence of observations? How do we recover the path that the robot traveled through the apartment only by looking at the floor coverings that the robot traveled over? This begged the question of what exact, exactly does best mean? Well, one way that we could answer best is we could say, what is the most likely state that the robot could be in at any given time t, given our observation in our model? So to answer this question, we, we can introduce a new variable called gamma. Gamma t i is the probability that we are in state i at time q t, given our observations and our lambda. Now remember, this is the probability that we're in that position given all the observations that have come before and all the observations that are come, gonna come after. And of course, the model probabilities as well. So although it's sort of a simple representation, it's actually taking into account all of the observations on either side and saying, well, what is the probability that we're at a particular part, at a particular spot in the apartment given all the floor coverings we've seen before and all the floor coverings that are coming, gonna come after. This would be a difficult question to answer, a different, a difficult, um, this variable would be a difficult variable to solve for if it weren't for the previous work that we'd done with our alpha and beta components. By looking at those and incorporating them, we actually can very quickly solve the answer to gamma ti. The question of what is the most likely, or what is the probability of the gamma sub t, gamma ti is the probability that we're in a state i at a given um, time. We can answer that by multiplying alpha ti times beta ti. So remember, alpha ti was the probability, given regardless of the way that we got there, that we are in state i at time t after seeing all the observations up until time t. And then beta t is the probability that we start, that starting in state i, we would see all the remainder of observations up until time capital T. So it's like alpha t is the probability of everything that comes before, and beta t is the probability that, of everything that comes after. So if we multiply those th two things together, we get some kind of a probability of, the, of being in that state at a given time. But what we have to do is we have to normalize this number. And we have to normalize it so that we make sure that we understand that we're, we're gonna, we want to work with a probability. Um, and we want to work with a probability over all the possible uh, observations that we could see given all the possible um, states that we could have gone through. What's the probability of the, op the observation sequence that we did see given all the possible states that we could go through? Well, we actually know that, that value too, and it's fairly simple to calculate. What we can do is we can iterate over the expression in the numerator in the denominator. And so what we can say is that although in the numerator we're interested in the probability of being in one particular state at one particular time, we can add up all the states that we could possibly be in at that time. Those are states one through n, and if we add up the probability of getting there using the alpha parameter and the beta parameter, that sum becomes the numerator that we normalize, becomes the denominator that we normalize our numerator by. And by doing this, we're able to ensure that the sum over all states of gamma t sub i is one making sure that gamma, sub t, gamma t sub i is a probability. So what we're able to do is we're able to then take our gamma t sub i, and now we have a function that says, okay, pick a state and, and pick a time. Let's say it's halfway through a state sequence and we're interested in our first state. 
we can say, well, what is the probability that at halfway through our observation sequence, we're in one particular state? Well, we can figure that out because we can look up in gamma t sub i, and we know how to calculate that based on our alpha and our beta. And our alpha and our beta terms are actually um, fairly efficient to calculate. And the sum in the denominator is also fairly efficient to calculate. Typically, there aren't a, a ridiculous number of states that you're working with. And so this together is, it helps us to answer one of those questions if we take it one more step. And that step is we just have to search over all the possible gamma t sub i's for the one that has the highest probability. Visually, what this looks like is combining those alpha and those beta lattices. We're interested in what is the probability of being in state i at a moment, lowercase t, somewhere in the middle of 1 to capital T. And by joining a particular alpha i and a particular beta i together, we form the total you know, the, the, the probability of getting there and the probability of, of leaving from there as well. So by combining those, we're, we are, we're able to form the parameter, we're able to solve for gamma ti once we divide by all the possible ways of bridging that divide there. All right, so the sum takes the sum of all the pairings as you go down that list of states, and that first one just becomes one of the, you know, n different pairings that you could have. So this says we now have a bunch of possible observations and we have now been able to identify which is the state that, uh, that maximizes that because we can just look at a given time t which state i maximize, has the highest probability and that's the most likely state that you're in at time t. So the, um, in order to do that we have to take an argmax over our function um, gamma t and we look over all of the states from 1 to n, what is the one that maximizes the probability? As we look down that gap, separating the alphas and the betas, the, um, everything that came before from everything that comes after, we say, well, what is the state that together has the highest probability? The number of that state then becomes QT, or the highest probability state that we're in at time, at, at time lowercase t. This is great. Um, it is going to choose the states that are going to maximize the expected number of correct states from time 1 to capital T. The problem is with doing it this way is that the result might not actually make sense. And the, way, the reason why it's not going to make sense is because the hidden Markov model is specifically a model that's dealing with sequential data. Data where one time step to another time step, the, for, the time before is, or the, um, the current time that you're in is informed by where you were at the previous time step. It's a dependent model. And the way we've just solved it with gamma t is to think about each step independently. And so as a result, you could get a sequence of states that might look like this as the robot moved through the world. Time one, this is the most um, likely state that you're in. Time two, time three, time four, times five, times six. So far, so good. Time seven. But then at time 8, in this particular hypothetical model, you might find that this was the most likely state that you would be in, and then 9, and then 10. And the problem here is that that sequence of states included a transition from one state to another that actually wasn't possible in our model. Our model had a zero probability of moving from the state that we picked there at time seven to time uh, 10, nine, eight, yeah, from time seven to time eight, that wasn't a possibility in our model. Nevertheless, at time seven, the most likely state we're in was the one lower there, and at time eight, the most likely state we would be in would be in the upper right, because we're not considering the path that we followed. So although gamma t will give us this maximum expected number of correct individual states, and that is one way of considering what the um, answer to best means, it probably isn't the one that you're most interested in, given that you're using a hidden Markov model to represent a sequential sequence of states. Instead, we might want to look at a second possible explanation for best. And in this case, what we're looking for is we're looking for a path sequence that maximizes a whole sequence of states that are possible to move through, given the observations that we've seen and the model that we have. Since we're interested in just maximizing this quantity, we can say that it's equivalent 
to maximize the, qu the quantity, the probability of a state sequence and an observation sequence given our model. And we have those quantities. So just to expand that, it's the probability of seeing Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 in a coherent pattern and of seeing the observations that we've seen given the model that we've got. Solving this is a, is a I don't know, computer science famous um, algorithm called the Viterbi algorithm. What we're going to do is we're going to build a lattice similar to the way that our alpha and beta solutions formed a lattice. But it's going to be a lattice that understands the sequence that we've come through. Let's introduce a variable to try and capture this. Our variable is going to be called delta t sub i, and it is going to be the sequence of states that maximizes the probability of seeing those states and observations given our lambda. Now the endpoints are, are, are important. So delta t sub i means what is, the, what is the sequence of states that maximizes the probability, what's the sequence of states q1 to qt minus 1, that maximizes the probability of seeing those particular states and then ending up in state i at time t. So it's like it's a little bit like the alpha variable in the sense that we're considering everything that came before and then clamping down our probability on one particular state i. What is the path with the highest probability that accounts for the first t observations but ends at state si? All right, well, we can solve this using induction. And the induction isn't crazy takes a little bit of time to think it through and to look at it. The basic inductive step is listed here. When we want to figure out what the best sequence of states is, extending it by 1, so going from t to t plus 1, we can ask ourselves, what was the state that maximized delta at the previous time step? That would be i. And then let's consider all the ways of getting from i to j, which is the step that we care about now, or, or rather, let's think about all the, all the previous places that we could have come from, and let's maximize the, um, the one that between the probability of getting to the previous state, moving from that state to the state we care about, and observing the observation that we see in state j, what is the quantity that makes that the highest? So delta t plus 1j is going to find that previous state that maximizes the transition from the previous state to the state we care about now, j. So it's going to do a search. It's going to search over all previous states to figure out which one was the best one, and then use that um, probability and increment it by the AIJ and then increment it by mm, sort of uh, uh, take it the next step by multiplying it times AIJ, the transition probability from moving from that high state, and then the probability of seeing the next observation at the current state. So that's the inductive step. The only thing that's different about this from our alpha and beta is that we have to keep track of where we came from um, at each time step so that we can recreate that path, which is what we cared about all along. And so to do that, we're going to keep track of a variable called psi, which is just the state that we came from. So the whole of the Turby algorithm, in the inductively stated, is as follows. In our first time step, we want to initialize delta 1 sub i as being the probability of starting in state i and observing our first observation. So the probability of starting in state i is pi i. And the probability of seeing our first observation in state i is bi01. So together, that gives us the probability of starting in state i and seeing our first observation. And since all, that's um, the, all we have up till now, that's the entire state sequence, we're all set. Now, psi i, psi i um, is going to say, what is the um, state that, what state did we come from given that we're in the current state now? And that should actually be psi 1 um, sub i. And so we came from no previous state because this is the very beginning. All right, so now the inductive step says we want to determine what delta t 
at state j is. So what is the highest, what is the probability, the best sequence of states, what's the probability of the best sequence of states that gets us to state j, but which consists of a actually achievable sequence of states? Well, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna look, need to look over all the states that we came from, from one to n, those are all the possible states that we could have come from. We want to look at the maximum probability of being at that state at the previous time step, given a valid sequence of states. And we want to multiply it times aij and then bj, the probability of getting to the state we care about and the probability of seeing that observation. And then we store that at delta t at time t for all the possible states. We get all the possible best ways of being at our next state. Now to update our trail of where we came from, we just need to keep track of which state it was that brought us there. And so since we're all, all of us are arriving, um, since all of the states are gonna see the same observation at time t, we don't need to multiply this quantity times uh, bjot because all of our states are gonna observe that as well. We just need to keep track of what was the highest, what was the index that maximized the probability of being someplace we came from and then making a high probability transition to the next step. Okay, so the time steps for that are gonna be two to capital T because we did our initialization step at time one, and then the states that we're gonna search over are gonna be one to n. And then finally, when we wanna do our termination step, we, figure, we find that the optimal probability or the probability, the, the highest probability sequence of states that we could have moved through that was a valid sequence of states is going to be that sequence of states which has the highest delta capital T sub i. So the, whichever delta T is highest at the final time step, that is the ending state, which is the most, is the highest probability and had a valid sequence of states that brought us there. The actual state that we're gonna be in is you know, whichever state corresponds to that highest um, delta as well. We have to recurse, if we want to recursively figure out which state we came from, we need to use that psi variable in order to track our way back. And so the way we do that is we say, okay, the, the final, any particular state that we're interested in, lowercase t, the optimal state that we came from is going to be um, the next state um, that we follow through the psi variable. All right, so what that means is that this path sequence is going to maximize a valid path, not just a valid individual state. And so we would move through a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but at the seventh state, we would have to go through a sequence of states that's viable. We can't jump to an uh, impossible pair of states. What's interesting to notice about the solution to the Viterbi algorithm is how similar the solution is to the um, alpha forward and backward terms, alpha and beta. Instead of calculating the sum over all the possible previous probabilities, we're just figuring out which one was the maximum previous probability. But otherwise, the recursive step is you know, structurally very similar, but it gives us a different, a different kind of result that we're interested in for that second key question. You, because of this, you know that it is also an efficient calculation because it has the same structure. And we demonstrated in previous video how calculating alpha t and beta t is a reasonably efficient um, solution because of the um, lattice structure that we build out of it. Okay, so that's the second key question. How do we recover the state sequence that we care about? Um, We'll look at the third sequence, the third interesting question in our final sequence of videos. Thank you for your attention. And since that's all we...